Hi everyone, welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Setting Up Python and Pygame in Windows. My name is Tim Warner. As you probably know, Python is a very versatile high-level programming language that can be used just about for any purpose under the sun. For those of you who are interested in video game development, you can use Python along with an excellent library called Pygame. Pygame is a Python interface to the C language Simple Direct Media Layer Library, or SDL. This gives us really efficient, low-level access to the computer components that are used all the time in video game development. Things like your video card and, of course, your audio card. In this micro nugget, I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment quickly and easily. Let's get started. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the Microsoft Windows OS. If you're using OS X or Linux, shoot me an email or leave a comment here at YouTube if you'd like me to make a micro nugget showing you the differences in those installation routines. The first thing we need to do is download the requisite binaries. The reference CPython distribution can be found at python.org. On the download page, I'm going to grab the latest version of Python 3. Here is a gotcha for you to consider. Pygame is, how can I put this diplomatically, not the most up-to-date library in the world. Basically, as you'll see in just a moment, actually let me switch over here now, at the pygame.org website, you'll find on the downloads page references only to 32-bit windows. So if you want to stay with the public, generally available versions, you'll want to download the x86 version of Python 3.3 for Windows instead of the 64-bit version. Now, yes, you can hack around and find unreleased or potentially unstable versions of 64-bit Pygame, but we're going to stick to the letter of the law here. So, you download your 32-bit Python, you come over to the Pygame download page, and you'll notice here that not only do we have references only to 32-bit Windows, but we don't have a reference, or a version, should I say, that works with Python 3, only version 2. Aren't you glad I made this micro nugget to help you solve these problems? You'll want to go to the Pygame Bitbucket page, which you're seeing right on your screen, and I'll put up a short hyperlink to get you there. By the way, those cbt.gg hyperlinks that you see are in fact case sensitive, so make sure to preserve the case. And you'll find here Pygame 1.9.2a0, for Win32 Python 3.3. It's easy to see because this is the most popular file. The third thing you'll want to download is an integrated development environment. Now, I personally find PyCharm to be really easy to use. If you go to the JetBrains website, you can click Get PyCharm 3 now, and you'll see that there is a paid version that has more features, but we can get the free community edition, and that's perfectly fine for most Pygame video game development. So you'll click Download Community and pull that down. You'll notice that PyCharm is cross-platform, so it's available for Mac users as well as Linux users. Once you have all the bits down, it's time to install them, and you want to do that in the proper order. The first thing we'll do is launch the Python MSI file. This is basically a next, next, next default installation. You'll want to keep the installation path simple. C Python 33 is the default. You definitely want to add Python XE to your path so you can start the interpreter from wherever you are in a command line environment. If you click Advanced, you can pre-compile all of the library Py files for faster execution. That's optional, of course. And then click Next to finish that installation. Coolness. This completed successfully, so we'll finish, and now we'll launch the Pygame installer that I've already downloaded. Again, it's a default installation, next, next, next. I'm going to install for all users. Cool thing about Windows is we have the registry that stores the location of the Python installation, so I'll just leave this screen at the default, click next, it unpacks everything to your Python path, click finish, and we're done. Now let's install the community edition of PyCharm. I downloaded that, as you can cleanly see. Weighs in a little over 100 megabytes. And again, this is basically a next, next installation. I will create a desktop shortcut, accept all the defaults, let this run. 
Well, that was easy. I will tick the box to run PyCharm Community Edition. Judging by the name, Pi, with the reference to the snake, this is an IDE that's specifically focused on Python development. At first launch, we see this complete installation message box. I don't have a previous version of PyCharm on, so I'm not going to import anything. We're asked to set an initial key map scheme, IDE theme, and editor colors. There's an expansion here where you can preview what your text will look like. You can spend time in there if you want. For instance, if you're a Visual Studio developer or an Eclipse developer, you can load those settings. It's nice that JetBrains gives us that flexibility. Let's click OK and click Create New Project. I'll call this Test. Notice that the default is to put in your home folder a folder called PyCharm Projects, and then your project is a subfolder there. We have to make sure to select Interpreter. Now note that there's nothing here, so let's click the ellipsis, click plus. It detected Python 3 from the registry, so let's click it. Once you have the interpreter included, you can press Enter to continue, make sure that the interpreter shows correctly, and click OK. That's all first run stuff that you won't see anymore. So once you get the first run and initial environment stuff all set, you're good. So I'm going to dismiss the tip of the day. Click got it to get rid of this little pop up. And let's just quickly test to make sure that Pygame has been successfully installed. We'll right click our folder and select new file. I'll call this test.py and I'll just try to import the Pygame module. If that comes back with no errors, then we know we're golden. Let's open the Run menu, select Run. Notice that you can Alt-Shift F10 as well. I'll use the test configuration. Exit code 0 means that it did successfully install that module. Good deal. All right, that's it, friends. Let me show you one more thing. Some of you, for whatever reason, love the Eclipse IDE. I don't mean to bash it. It's pretty cool. But just if you do want to use Eclipse, the short way to do that is, one, you have to download and install the Java Development Kit. Here's a URL that takes you directly to that page. Next, you download and extract Eclipse. Again, download page. Make sure that you're running Eclipse as an administrator in Windows, always. And then third, you'll want to install the PyDev extension. You can do that from within Eclipse, and the tutorial at pydev.org is really good to that end. Alrighty, so at this point, friends, you're ready to start your video game development with Python and Pygame. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.